We come forth not to get you to believe anything. We see great diversity in that which you believe. And in all of that, there is perfect balance. And so we come forth not to alter your beliefs, but to reacquaint you with the eternal laws of the universe. And we are here to express all of that to you. In Los Angeles Times on April 21st, you said that the, you told the Associated Press uh, that the American government has created weather tampering techniques so that the new world order will be able to starve millions of Americans and to control the rest. Would you explain what you were trying to say? Well, it, it, what I was trying to say is exactly what I said. There is weather control techniques. We have a complete package on that, which I did not bring, but I certainly will see to it that it is brought in for the record. Number one, the entire patents on the equipment. Number two, Senator Claiborne Pell's complete statement and story of his own that not only does it exist, but that we even utilize it as far back as the Vietnam War. You might want to touch base with right, Senator right. So we now have the Tibet flank. China is also a major target of the destabilization that's been going on for the past several years in Darfur, in that part of the Sudan, where China is targeted because of its investments and offers to build infrastructure in Africa in return for access to petroleum and other strategic raw materials of the African continent. This is considered to be a real no-no by the oligarchs in London and their allies in Paris and other European capitals who have historically viewed Africa as their private looting ground where they carry out population genocide and then steal the raw material wealth of the African continent. Now, and in China, the full horror of Monday's earthquake is starting to unfold. As rescuers push to the heart of the disaster, they're finding entire towns virtually obliterated. According to one report, the death toll is now well over 20,000 and rising by the hour. The blueprint for HARP, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. What does HARP do? HARP is, uh, is a large antenna where we beam radio frequency energy up into the upper atmosphere and we create on a small scale what the sun normally Applications, does. Applications uh, discussed in the patents included destroying missiles. Communications control and disruption were included. There were some other ideas both to possibly modify weather and finally uh, to lift a portion of the upper atmosphere further out into space where hopefully it would be able to deflect missile trajectories. In 1983 I did radio tomography with 30 watts looking for oil in the ground. I found 26 oil wells over a nine state area and 100 percent of the time was accurate with just 30 watts of power beaming straight into solid rock. HARP uses a billion watts beam straight into the ionosphere for experiments. Picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth. Each one has its own frequency. What we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like and we say that's crude oil we were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. A harp can create some of the effects that the sun creates that are similar to the aurora borealis. Harp can paint 
um, designs in the sky, if you will. Wake struck China. Roll it. That's from an airport. That tape, uh, tape rather, comes from a spot near the epicenter of that city. There's a lot of people around here that have really a lot of strange ideas, and I think many of them are pretty bizarre. Michelle Angbritson you know, keeps I mean, the harp computers from freezing up in between visits from the military scientists. Well, do you know, I mean, do you understand what they're, what they're doing here well, when the scientists the, come in? You mean when the scientists come in and shoot the beams up? Yeah, they're uh, shooting the beams up, and I think that heats a little small space in the ionosphere. And then uh, you've got guys that are sitting on computers, and you've got uh, people putting up weather poles that measure weather and everything like that. I mean, there's a lot of spooky going on here. There have been claims made by some scientists that, um, that you could heat up the ionosphere and affect local weather. Uh, if you were to do Eastland patterns, I have no doubt that's the case. With time glass in it. So mm. symbolic to pyramids and time and stuff. Yeah. And then on either side of that, you've got two very tall candles looking like number 11 and also looking like the two pillars of Freemasonry that ISIS is standing between. Mm. So what I'm here and proposing today is that essentially we have got Princess Diana being identified with the fertility god of ISIS. Hmm. Very right. interesting. Do, do you have, so, by the way, do you have uh, taken any pictures of, of uh, this I've memorial? Got, I've, I've got photos of it. I, the problem I've got is I can't write enough in enough time because I work full time as well to yeah. get this all out. Do you know what I mean? It's such a big thing to write about. It's, of course, uh, of course. It requires a lot of time. Yeah. But basically, um, so you think about this with the New World Order, they wanted a one world religion. We've got the combination of Christianity and Islam here symbolically mm. in Harry. Right, and obviously Islam and Christianity both accept the angel Gabriel as a messenger of God. Mm. So we've got the proof here that they want to do this with Diana. They want to identify her with ISIS. Mm. So what does that make Prince William if ISIS is, you know, the mother fertility okay. god? Um, he was born on June the 21st. Do you mm. know when June the 21st is? That's the summer solstice. Yes. Yeah. Um, so basically, you know, the son of most high. Yep. So, in the New Testament, the angel Gabriel announced, He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Most High. The mm. Holy which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, we've got Prince William's birthday, and it's on the solstice, when the sun is most high. Yeah. Right? And then you look into it a bit further. How old is he in 2012? Probably well, 33, 30, right? No, he's 30 years old. 30 years right? old, okay, yeah. Mm. Connection here. Jesus began his ministry at age 30. There you go, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you can't get away from this. It's all over these people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, symbolically, 30 years old, William's birthday, symbolically can be seen as an XXX in Roman numerology. That's right, yeah. And it just so happens that the Olympics 2012 is XXX. So, it's the same same Olympiad. It's exactly, well. exactly. It's, it's the... Uh, the what does it be, the 30th uh, yeah, games 30th. summer olympic yeah. games yeah exactly yeah. the, the alphanumerical number on a, a alphanumeric system from 1 yeah. to to 9 then i think x becomes uh, 6 so it's basically 666 six, six, right six, there six, six, well, i didn't know that but that's good. the yeah. games of the 30th olympiad in 2012 are awarded to the city of Um, the day after the 7-7 um, seven, seven bombings of London, but on that particular day, everyone, the news would have us believe, was full of like positive energy that Great Britain had won the Olympic Games. I mean, I think there's probably only about 2% who were bothered about it, <laughs> but um, the media would obviously tell you that everyone was, uh, you know, going out and getting drunk about it, but yeah. essentially no. Yeah. Um, but what they didn't tell you... Um, and it's been covered up by the news, but it's on the internet, but it never got covered in News 24 or whoever, whatever you watch. Basically, on the same day that London bid was won for the Olympic Games, right, there was a huge, well, I don't know what you want to call it, massacre in the, on the island of Haiti. Mm -hmm.